Welcome to Frenzy Printing. My name is Becky. I'll be your host. Let's get into today's video. I thought I might talk about some basics of this slicer. So I am on the version 1.3.4 because I do believe in the old adage that if it's not broke, don't fix it. So I have not updated my slicer. If you go to help and the about button, it'll tell you what version slicer you're on. So that being said, I'll show you some things that I know about this slicer's main menus. Starting at the top with the file button, you can start a new project, open a project that you've previously saved, see a list of all of your recent projects, save a project, save your project as, this allows you to save it in a specific location with a different name other than what you see up here. Uh, import allows you to import a model, but there's another way to do that as well. Export allows you to export whatever's on your plate as a model, and then quick closes the slicer. Most of these functions under the edit are all available Actually, all of these are all available in the slicer. You don't really have to use the menu. Um, view is handy if you've gotten too far away from your build plate or your build plate flies off the screen and you can't find it anymore. Uh, you can go to menu and then view and then bring it back into focus using these buttons. Then you have use perspective view and use orthogonal view. Uh, the difference on these is basically, if you just look at my screen, now I have it on orthogonal view. Um, that's not exactly what I prefer, but if you prefer viewing it that way, that's fine. Perspective to me feels more natural, like looking at it with your natural eye. Um, what else? Oh, show the G-code window. After you've sliced a model, if you want to see the G-code, press the C button on your keyboard and you can see the G-code. Just press the C button again and the G-code disappears. Uh, show 3D Navigator. This basically just pops up this little thing down here that you can grab and click and hold and then move it around and it will move your plate like that. Or you could just grab your plate and move it around and move your plate like that. You don't really need to have this on your screen to be able to do that. That's the left mouse button, click and hold. So I'm actually going to remove that. In order to show the last of these options, I do have to import something just so you can see what it does. So I can either right click on my build plate and go to add models, and that will upload a model from my file folders or you can use this cube up here with the plus icon. Both of them will open up your file folders for you to pick something. I'm just gonna pick a random file and it looks like this is a 3MF. Um, if you haven't watched my previous video about uploading 3MFs, you probably should. But um, this, I'm gonna go ahead and just edit this. I don't have a bamboo lab. I have Cobras and Anycubics, so let's just pick a random K3 with a 0.4 nozzle so that we can get moving here and I'll show you the last of these view options. So the next view option is show labels. When you have show labels on, it basically just shows you the name that you have over here in this left hand screen under objects. This is in your process settings. Um, it's named assembly. If you wanna change the name of this, you can. You just double click on it and then start typing and it will rename it. And now your label is showing the correct name. And the other option up here is show overhangs. This one's not gonna be very impressive with this model, but if you click on show overhangs, now you can see that the overhangs are highlighted. Um, this model doesn't really have overhangs. It doesn't need support. So very unimpressive here, but if you were worried about does this need supports? Does that look like it needs supports? Um, you might want to do that, turn that on, um, view overhangs. The other thing I wanted to show you was the last view option, which was show selected outline. I know it says experimental. This one isn't very cool unless you have a single colored object. And all I did was just delete the other colors off of here. 
if I needed to see this model more clearly, like more of its definition, and let's say the color of it over here is something dark and it's hard to see, right? Um, instead of messing around with the color or trying to find something easier to see, I can always go up to view and click on selected outline. Then when you click on your model, you get all sorts of definition, just like that. All right, let's talk about preferences. Um, the preferences menu from the top menu, um, you can select your language, region, uh, the dimensions that you use, metric versus imperial. Uh, the default page can be your prepare page instead of your home page. Um, the allow only one any cubic slicer next instant. Uh, I always just leave this unchecked. It the AnyCubic's only going to let you log into two uh, instances of the slicer at a time. So if you open up a whole bunch, like I have a whole bunch of them open here, I have four. Only two of them can be logged in. All the other ones will be logged out. So as you log into another one, one of them gets logged out, and you'll get a little error message on the screen that says you've been logged out. Um, zoom to mouse position, use free camera, show splash screen. Then you have this section here for associate files to any cubic slicer next or ASN as I like to call it because uh, that's a that's a mouthful. These you can either check these boxes so that all 3MF, STL, and STEP files automatically open in ASN or you can uh, open up your file folders and right click an SDL file, go to open with, choose another app, click on ASN, and then click always. This will always open every single SDL file in ASN. If you want to do the same thing with 3MFs, do the same thing with a 3MF. Just pick a random 3MF, go to open with and choose another app, then click it and say always. Mine's already set up that way. That's why these little icons are always in front of those type of files. This is particularly handy if you have more than one slicer on your computer. If you have a bamboo lab slicer or if you have Prusa slicer or whatever other type of slicer on your computer, uh, you can designate uh, ASN to be your primary slicer for opening files of this nature. Uh, under project, we have maximum recent projects. This is um, set to 18, that's the default. This is when you go to the home screen and you see here that says recently opened. When you click more, uh, it's gonna max out at 18. So that's all that is. Then the next option is clear my choice on the unsaved projects. The next one is no warnings when loading 3MF with modified G code. What a modified G code is, is when uh, somebody adds something to the G code, which is what tells the printer what to do. Um, then you want to get a little pop up screen telling you that it's the, the G code has been modified. Modified G codes happen frequently if you're going to be printing uh, a Hue Forge, for example, because Hue Forge needs to have the color change set to specific layer heights or um, files that have been designed for printers that can only print one color at a time, uh, then somebody might have put a pause command or a color change command in the G code so that people can take the spool of filament off and then change the color and then start the print again. Um, downloads, it'll tell you what download folder uh, is being currently used. You can change your automatic download folder. And then dark mode, this is for those of you who like the dark mode for uh, visual purposes. So this is what dark mode looks like. The other menu in here is the help menu. Help menu will tell you what keyboard shortcuts. Some people are a, a big fan of keyboard shortcuts rather than using their mouse commands. Uh, they'd rather use keyboard commands. So if you need to know your keyboard commands, here's where you find them. Then you have show configuration folder. This is where all of your uh, AnyCubic Slicer Next configuration files are located. Then we have check for updates. 
check for updates will tell you if there is another release of the slicer and it will give you the notes. So this one says, I have an update available of 1.3.6 and here's the advantage of upgrading or updating to this version. Okay, so basic navigation. Uh, if you have a mouse with a scrolly wheel in the center and you scroll forward, it zooms in. If you scroll back towards your wrist, it scrolls out. If you use your right mouse clicker, hold it down and then move your mouse around, it does move the build plate around on the screen for you. If you use the left mouse clicker, hold it down and move it around, it gyrates the plate for you. This little button that looks like a save disk does just that. If you click save, it's going to be like the save as feature. If you have a model and you're working on it, you made changes, maybe you scaled it or whatever, and you want to save your changes, but you don't want to mess with the original just in case you need to go back to it. That's what you can use as well. It's just another option. Then we have undo and redo and calibration. I have a whole video about this calibration menu that you should definitely check out. Luna the shop mascot says, if you're enjoying this content and you wanna see more, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.